Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know what happened, but somewhere down the road, we have allowed church to become regulated into a niche hobby. And if you want to know what that means, think about how you talk about your hobbies to the people who care about them and the people who don't. My wife doesn't care about my fantasy football team. It's heartbreaking a little bit, but I've come to accept it. My best friend from high school still roasts me about my draft, even though it's week eight and I'm beating him. A solid half of you have already given up on this sermon and are hoping that next week's will be better, which is kind of the thing about hobbies. Of course, we argue over stuff that nobody else cares about. That's what a hobby is. If you want to do it, fine, but it's only for like-minded folks to discuss. And so it's also great that 504 years ago, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to the door of a church protesting the sale of indulgences centered around the complaint that if the Pope truly sat as the arbiter and steward of the treasury of merit, he ought to just hand it out for free instead of charge people for it. And that's all well and good if you care, but if you don't actually have an active interest in theology or 16th century European history, why bother going to Bible study? You learned it all in eighth grade when you took the state capital test, and you remember both just fine. And a solid half of us are willing to go ahead and sign off on the fact that the capital of New Hampshire is New Hampshire City. <laughs> We're doing fine without Bible study. More or less, because, I mean, really, if this is just one more hobby competing with your time and energy with every other hobby that you have, it sort of just comes down to personal preference. If it is just another hobby, the world is never going to understand the point of Reformation Day. The world doesn't see the difference between Lutherans and Catholics. We dress the same. We sing the same. To them, you're either Christian or you're not and as long as you're willing to be with them on their political issues, after that, they're willing to sort of treat the whole thing like Star Wars. Just don't talk about Star Wars to people who aren't interested in Star Wars, and life goes a lot better. They don't care. And I'll do my best to get over that, too. Definitely, though, don't tell other people how to live based on Star Wars. Everyone should be free to do what they want. Who are you to tell somebody else what they have to care about, which is really what this whole thing is all about. We want the freedom to choose for ourselves what matters, what to hang on to. But Jesus says anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. There's a lot of folks who dodge the whole church scene just because they don't want to be called a sinner. They don't want to bind themselves to a code of behavior. They don't want to give up Sunday morning hobbies. And we don't want to acknowledge that it is a genuine sacrifice to choose church over sports or family or any of the other things that we would rather be doing but have to pretend we're so happy to be here anyway. And we don't want to have the discussion because... We think we're free to choose something else, even if it is really just a distraction to cover up what's really wrong. That's what we do with our hobbies. We use them instead of dealing with the things that are really wrong. We wrap up our whole identity inside of our hobbies. We put on jerseys, we sing songs at concerts, we quote movies to each other incessantly. We do all of it to bury everything that we would rather not talk about. Because it's just a lot easier for me to talk to my dad about the running back situation with the Cleveland Browns and all of the ways that we've disappointed each other over the years. It is easier just to turn the music up in the car than to relive the thing that I should have done but feel guilty about all afternoon long. It is easier to quote movies at each other 
then lament a world you don't know how to fix. The church doesn't talk about football, but what the church talks about is everything that football covers over. We just have a word for it. We call it sin. It's not meant to induce new feelings of anxiety or guilt or shame, but to just label everything we already feel and would rather bury underneath hobbies. Because at the end of the day, you can choose to do the hobby all you want, but if you can't choose not to do the thing you're hiding from, how free are you really? An addict can choose to get high. The gossip can choose what they want to talk about today. But when you cannot choose not to, are you really free? For all we want freedom, we end up chained to all of the things we are convinced we're choosing but really seem to own us at the end of the day, chained to the desperate hope that nobody can actually see what's real underneath all of it, chained to the effort of pretending about something that would be true if only we just gave ourselves enough but still isn't that fake me that I need to be so that I can be accepted and loved so that I can matter in society. We feel chained to the need to be more than we actually are. And the problem is the more we fake it, the more the expectations just seem to keep piling up and none of us, not a single one, is as great as the people around us want us to be. And sometimes just pretending is too much. Sometimes we are just desperate to look a little bit less ruined than we actually are because the fear of being really known, really seen underneath everything else that we would hide, is terrifying. Because what is buried underneath every stupid thing that I would rather talk about inside of me is ugly. The church calls it sin for a reason. It breaks stuff. It hurts the people around me. It hurts me. And we are all of us pretty good at hiding it anymore. But still, there is that guilt of knowing the truth that as much as I pretend, as much as I hide it underneath hobbies of all sorts and sizes, it doesn't actually change anything. It just gets harder and harder to carry around. And even what I can hide from everybody else, God sees. And it's not just the God who says, do whatever makes you happy. If you just pray hard enough and buy stuff for the church, It'll all even out and you'll get all the stuff you really want. We do have a God who threatens punishment for sin, for all of it, for the pain that we inflict upon our neighbor who God loves, even if you can't stand them, for the way that we mistreat and disrespect him when we claim to love him so much but cast aside his word every chance we get, and for our absolute inability to do anything else. Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin, even while we try our best to convince each other we are free. Because the lie is just more comfortable. It's the same lie that the devil has been telling us since we've been around to tell it. Over and over again, he says, this is on you. You better carry it. Figure out a way. And then all he really has to do is wait till we're teetering on the edge and point out all the places where we couldn't, where we don't. That is what the Reformation is about. Truth. Truth that sets us free from all of the lies that we tell ourselves and each other. Truth that even sets us free from fear, from bondage to sin, and all of the baggage that comes with it. And that truth is simply this. God sees all of the things that we hide. God sees you sinking underneath the weight of all of it. And he loves you anyway. Full stop. He loves you anyway, not because you have fixed your life, not because you have promised to do better, not because you have bought, tithed, or given, not because you have done anything. Christianity, at its core, is not at all about how much you love Jesus. It is solely based upon how much he loves you. He loves you 
even knowing all that he does enough to wear these chains himself. He binds himself to your sins that break. He binds himself to your death that they warrant. He binds himself to this cross for you so that for everything that you would rather talk about sports instead of confronting, your sins are forgiven. For all of the things that you hide and all of the things that you wish weren't, your sins are forgiven. For all of the things that keep you up at night, your sins are forgiven. For Jesus has died for you. Full stop. You are righteous before God. You are worthy of love. You are holy. No matter what anyone would tell you, despite the devil and his lies, or all of the things that we would wish we could undo, your sins are forgiven you. This is not a hobby. This is freedom. This is truth and life. And it matters not just to a niche group of aging Germans, but to all of the world, because every last person in some way, shape, or form is struggling. And the church must not simply be another hobby among them, because we give Jesus to sinners here. Whatever you've done, whatever has been done to you, here, Jesus forgives you and gives you an identity not rooted in the hobbies that you love to cover up the things that you bury. But here you are given a real identity. You are baptized. You are named his child, righteous with all of the saints in heaven. You are named his saint, a holy one, purer than any angel. This is who you are now, simply baptized. And that is enough. That is true. You are free. We don't need fake smiles anymore. We don't need to fake an identity to try and measure up to standards we know we cannot reach. Every single day, you are enough because Christ has covered everything that isn't. Every single day, the old Adam, that sinner inside you, enslaved to sin and death, he is drowned in that font. And every single day, God raises up the new man to live before him in righteousness and purity forever, free from the bondage to all of it. Do your hobbies. Enjoy your life. Love your neighbor. But your identity doesn't have to be bound into any of them anymore. You are a sinner that Jesus died for. And so you are a sinner no more. Your sins are forgiven you, for Christ bore the cross for you. In the name of Jesus, amen.